You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name's Rob. Welcome to episode 948. Grateful for you, all of you hanging out with us, hopefully getting a ton of value out of this and uh, send those questions in. We'd love to hear from you. Also, special thank you for the reviews that you have been mm-hmm. posting on Spotify, iTunes, and Stitcher. Stitcher, we only have like very, very little, but iTunes is uh, upwards of 250 now, so I really appreciate that. Um, that's been growing over time. So yeah, really one of the best you. things people can do to help us, sorry to cut you off, is to subscribe. Right, That's huge. It's very, it really very helpful. Is. It really is. Today, we are going to be talking about what happens if the airport that is near you and has controlled airspace is not link authorized. What do you do? And I'm going to give you a tricky piece of psychology that you can use on these air traffic controllers that will actually mm. give you legal permission. There's a hint it, to the answer. If you, It's all about how you word things, Rob. <laughs> Cause at Usually the end, is. Yeah, because at the end of the day, remember before you hear any part of this show, who has the ultimate authority of the airspace for drone pads? Do you know the answer to this, Rob? The ultimate authority to the airspace for drone pilots is? I'd say the ATC. Bingo! Boom, baby! Let's hear the question. The tower at the airport that I live near is not yet Lance equipped. So I want to know what I can do about that or or how I can fly in the nearby area if I can or, or what are the rules specifically surrounding that because I'm getting a lot of mixed answers and I, I need a straight one. <laughs> um, I love I, the succinct nature of the question, by the way. Well, I got on, I empathize with this guy 100% because sure. there's even a guy local in one of the local towers, smaller airport, who even in SGI, special government operations scenarios, fights um, quick approval of drone pilots. Um, he's just one of those just like aviation to the core, overly safe, and um, it doesn't get him what he wants, though, of a safer airspace. Because my one message to you air traffic controllers who are tower operators, contract private or FAA, um, is that if there is not a path to letting someone legally fly in controlled airspace in a reasonable amount of time, that's not 90 days. Um, that's like a couple days, a week maybe. Let's just, let's go with a week. Even that isn't necessary, is it? I mean, they know immediately what's going on around the airport. (sighs) Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, That being said, if an airport is not on link, what can you do? There are two options. Option number one is the low and slow way. Um, And what you do is you have to go through the drone zone, file for a wide area authorization for that airport. That way you can fly that airspace whenever you want. Uh, essentially, you may have to follow some guidelines like calling the tower. Now, and, the, and that's a longer term solution as that's, well. You're supposed to have 90 days, yeah, which everyone knows is ridiculous. Now, option number two is you can um, go to the air traffic controller and try to get authorization. Typically, that doesn't happen, at least depending on who you're working with. If you're working with someone who's open minded, lifelong learner, understands that they can't control everything around them, then you'll probably end up getting airspace authorization. But if you're working with an old kook, chances are you may not. So what can you do? First of all, you need to find out, does this particular airport have a UASFM map? That is a UAS facilities map. You can just Google FAA, UASFM. That's Foxtrot, Alpha, Alpha, Universe, Alpha, (laughs) Sam, Foxtrot, Mary. You just did that to test yourself. Yeah, and I just totally blew three letters. (laughs) Like, I already know I messed up at least two or three letters. I think they got it. Um, Yeah, the whole idea here, this is why this is important. If you need access to the airspace in a couple days, which is very normal for any human being who does business on a modern day scale, 
what I would do is I would call, and in fact, I have not done this. And as I'm sitting here thinking about this, I'm like, gosh, why didn't I do this last time? Because <laughs> the law says that if air traffic controller gives you permission to fly in controlled airspace, it is allowed. There have been air traffic controllers who will not admit that on the telephone, uh, of which I recorded one. So sorry, Mike, but you might be on the show soon. <laughs> um, anyway, long story short. No last names, please. Yeah. Anyway, long story short. What you should do as a drone pilot is say, uh, call the tower, say, I'm looking at the UASFM facilities map and my um, guidance to call the tower. I'm right here. And it says that I am only allowed to fly to 200 feet. Is that correct? Now, what do you do by asking the question the exact way that I just mentioned? You are saying, sorry, this is, this is a little conniving. <laughs> you are pretty much saying, are you aware of the UAS FM map? Do I have permission to fly here where this UAS FM map says any drone pilot can fly to 200 feet that you've already agreed to? Now understand, these air traffic controller, these controller operators, they have seen the UAS FM maps, if not help create them. So they definitely know what you're talking about. So don't let them try to fool you, Mike. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> so really what you're doing is you're setting them up because they don't want to be wrong. So they're going to have to agree with you to be right. It's called normative leverage. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it before. It's very powerful. Unless they're strong, a strong person, and they can admit that they don't know, right? And, yeah. and, and that would actually be okay. At least then they have something to go look up and figure out that you could then talk to them about because you're right. Well, when the FAA puts out a memo that they worked with all air traffic controllers to create these UASFM maps and that they typically have to talk with the towers before they approved the waivers that they gave out, I would say with a high degree of confidence that every tower operator that has a UASFM map has seen it, if not worked many detailed hours on it. Right, but do they know about the 200-foot rule? Well, I'm, that's what I'm saying is that if they help create the UASFM map, they know exactly where everyone can okay. fly and how high. Okay. Because here's the thing. When you ask the question that way, you're not saying whether you have a WASP there or not. You're asking for permission to fly from the authority who has the right to give it to you. If it's, you were to, It's a very tricky question. It's borderline notification. Yes. Yes, it is, but... I need to clarify, you cannot fly in controlled airspace with just notification. That sure. is not how it works anymore, right. okay? Maybe. You cannot do that. Typically, if you need to fly in controlled airspace, you have LANC, which you can get through Kitty Hawk, right? Or you can get through Skyward, right? And if that's not available, then you have to go to the wide area authorization. If that's not available, you contact the air traffic controller and you try to get permission in that area. Some air traffic controllers you can actually be honest with, tell them what's going on, tell them that you have a job, and they're typically going to work with you. Although you will have some old crotchety guys who literally, and I say guys because I've not run across a single female tower operator, old crotchety guys that will literally do nothing to help you get airspace, in fact, will outright lie to your face and say that they don't have the authority to make that call. When I recorded the tower operator, he was like, I don't have the power to make these calls. I was like, well, sir, do you control traffic coming in and out of the airport? Do you control who lands and takes off on the runway? Yes. I literally read the law to him. I was like, then, sir, you do have the approval. How do you expect me to not fly here? That was an open-ended calibrated question that did not work. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm saying ask the question as I mentioned prior to the show because you're, he's, one, admitting that he knows about the map by answering the question. He's, two, admitting knowing where you are in the map. Three, he's admitting to the elevation of said area. And four, by him saying yes, he's giving you a permission over the phone, which you should be recording. Uh, so it is admissible if FISDO were ever to be like, you can't fly here. Be like, well, here's the law that says ATC has the innate power to control UAS operations in controlled airspace. And here's the recording of him saying yes. Yeah. CYA. Of course, CYA. of course, every state has different rules about recording a call if the person on the other end doesn't know that you're recording the call. That is right, lawyer So you need, Rob. To, need to be aware of that. Uh, New Mexico is a single, single, I think it is, what is it yeah. called? Single, there's a name for it, single Whatever user. Whatever the term, I know what yeah, you mean, yeah, yeah. Meaning only you recording need to know. Mm -hmm. I've straight up told people before, though, and they still didn't listen to me, and they popped off the rails, and I was like, well, I got that on uh, recording. I record everything, everything. 
for two reasons. Number one, because I forget things. Okay, maybe not everything, but I record a lot. Uh, any like business meetings, calls, I record them. I want to A, be able to remember what the person told me. B, I need to confirm what the person told me. And if C, the person tries to backtrack and say that they didn't tell me something and they in fact did, then I can call them out on their BS and then see how they try to weasel out of it. And that's how you truly tell a person. It's like, it's not the FFFI test like the FBI does, but it's, it's, it's got some similar little, you know, this is the Paul test. <laughs> you sure you want everybody to know this? No. I probably shouldn't have said a word of it. Actually. You probably shouldn't have. <laughs> anyway, oh, all of a sudden uh, the tests always change. They're dynamic. They evolve with time. Yeah. I'm not this smart. <laughs> <laughs> On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Dronio. Ask Dronio.